Burgundy, a realm trapped between France and the Holy Roman Empire, must forge its own kingdom or it will fade into history. Although Burgundy did not receive a direct buff with the Domination DLC, they did get this new Tier 1 government reform, the Burgundian State. It's an amazing reform that gives plus 2 diplomatic relations, 100% reduction to changing rivals, 100% reduction to fort maintenance on the border with our rivals, and 5 years off personal union integration. This government reform perfectly suits Burgundy, who begins with lots of forts. Additionally, the extra diplomatic relations are vital, as we begin the game, 4 out of 7, that's because Burgundy starts with 4 subjects, the Vassal of Nevers, and the 3 personal unions representing the Burgundian Netherlands. Overall, it's a great government reform that suits the Burgundian playstyle of creating a very potent vassal swarm to unleash on the rest of Europe. Burgundy also benefits from getting a diplomatic relation with their traditions, along with 10% morale of armies, we get yearly prestige, mercenary maintenance, and manpower, 5% discipline, 10% trade efficiency, plus 2 tolerance of heretics, national manpower modifier plus 25%, and we have a finishing ambition, 15% goods produced. Overall, it's a great and versatile idea set that suits plenty of playstyles. Burgundy's mission tree has always been strong and is still the same, and we have plenty of options down this mission tree to form the nation of Lotharingia and become Emperor of the HRE. The first mission we're going to complete is the English Alliance. In order to do this, we need to set our rivals. So for the rivals, we're going to get France, England, and Provence. We rivaled France and England, so now all we have to do to complete this mission is send them insults. Again, it's very difficult to get an alliance with England as they will either set you as a rival or want your provinces. So let's take our diplomats and send insults to France, and then one to the English, and there you go we can complete the mission, the English Alliance. This gives us plus 25 improved relations for 20 years. Burgundy begins the game with the Chad Lord Duke Philippe Le Trois de Bourgogne. Yes, I speak a little French, may as well use it. Anyways, Philip the Good is a very good ruler. 555 five, five, along with three great personality traits. However, he is 48 years old, so he could pass away at any moment. Hopefully we can take advantage of his good rule for as long as possible. Since he has great stats, we also begin the game with plenty of power points. So what we're going to do is boost our stability. Burgundy's heir is Charles de Bourgogne, or Charles. Charles the Bold, and we cannot disinherit him due to historical reasons. That's because Charles is tied to the Burgundian succession crisis, which we're going to take advantage of to make Burgundy the strongest nation in EU4. Let us deal with the estates. We're going to start with the clergy, get religious states, oversight by the clergy, religious diplomats, clerical education for that reform progress growth, and lastly we are going to get clerical advisory council. It gives us some advisor cost reduction, and our ruler has the well-advised trait, giving us an additional 20% off our advisors, so we will be getting advisors. For the nobility, we're going to get Primacy of the Nobility, we're also going to get Aristocratic Counselors, Supremacy over the Crown, and Strong Duchies. It gives us another two diplomatic relations and reduces the liberty desire in all of our subjects. And with the privilege Strong Duchies granted, we can complete the mission Placate Subjects. All of our subjects have less than 1% liberty desire, so let's go ahead and complete this mission. And this mission gives us permanent claims on the Lorraine area, which are these four provinces right here. Next, of course, is the bourgeoisie. We're going to get land of commerce, patronage of the arts, the commercial advisory board, and free enterprise. That's all the privileges we need to grant to our estates. Now let's go ahead and seize land and summon the diet. We're going to take the proposal of the clergy. It works really well as we do have a mission called papal relations. We need to have the Pope's opinion of us to be at least 100 and have 50 papal influence. With our estates completed, let's grab some advisors, starting with the military advisor. Uh, we have two really good options. We can either go for 5% discipline or 10% morale of armies. Typically at the beginning of the game, it's best to get the morale of armies. We'll want discipline later on. So let's grab this advisor here. For our diplomatic advisor, we could either go with improved relations or diplomatic reputation. Both are fine. In my case, I'm going to get the improved relations. It'll just help us with missions later on. Lastly, for our admin advisor, we're going to get the stability cost modifier reduction he is the cheapest advisor to select. The next thing we're going to do is place our national focus into military power. The reason we're doing this is to get military tech for as quickly as possible ahead of all of our enemies, especially against the French, which is going to make our first war against them a lot easier. 
Next, what we're going to do is slacken our recruitment standards. We're going to do this to get that manpower recovery speed to build up our manpower for those first few initial wars. Our first alliance will be with the Pope. Next, you want to see who rivaled France. In this case, we have Aragon. So let us go ahead and get an alliance with the Aragonese. Hopefully they help us in that initial war against the French. The next alliance we're going to get is with the Emperor of the HRE, Austria. We don't need this alliance to defeat the French in that initial war, but it is a useful ally to have, so maybe they'll help us in future wars. The last ally we get is totally up to you. In my case, I'm going to get an alliance with the Milanese. With that alliance, we have 8 out of 9 diplomatic relations slots. You need to leave one slot open, because what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our subjects, click our vassal nevers, and we are going to seize land from them and take the province of Renthelwa. It's going to give them some liberty desire. That's all right, though. We can just placate local rulers. It costs a bit of prestige, but they lose 10% liberty desire. And when we do this, they are now loyal once again. With the province of Renthelwa in our possession, we can go ahead and create the subject of Champagne. Champagne does have cores on the French region that we're going to take advantage of and feed them back for less aggressive expansion in that first war against the French. At this point, you could attack Provence early to take a few provinces like Metz and Lorraine. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait until they are excommunicated by the Pope, which hopefully happens relatively soon. You may want to start focusing on the mission League of the Public Wheel. It's a very powerful mission that gives all of France's vassals plus 50% liberty desire. However, I recommend holding off on this mission as in this patch, the AI loves to support the independence of disloyal vassals. Instead, what we're going to do is probably focus on completing this mission right before the second war with the French. The reason we're doing this is that if we were to complete this mission and declare war on France, their vassals are going to get their independence supported by France's other rivals, and it's likely they're going to declare war on France, and we lose the opportunity to gain them as our vassals with the mission King of the Franks. If you're worried about this initial war with the French, then by all means go ahead and complete this mission. It's going to make the war way easier. Regardless, I still recommend just holding off on this mission for as long as possible. Border tensions. All right, we get a claim on Go, which is right here in Normandy. All right, the surrender of the main event happened, and it looks like the Hundred Years War is back on. Sometimes this event just doesn't happen, or other times the English will give up Maine. It really doesn't matter either way, I think. You can still beat France in that initial war if you have the military tech advantage, or you have some strong allies willing to help you. In my case, I think Aragon will be willing to help us, so that'll make the war a lot easier. All right, we've slackened recruitment standards fully. We'll go ahead and get the Free Company in the province of Dijonais, and let's go ahead and get Philippe Letois as our general. The French have mainly occupied all of the English provinces, aside from Calais. So let us go ahead and declare this war. We'll use a reconquest CB on Rem. Then what we're going to do is call in Aragon, offer them some lands. We're not going to give them any. France is not going to be joined by any other allies. So with that, let us go ahead and declare the first Franco-Burgundian War. We took Paris. We just need a few more forts in this area. We need Chartres, Bologne, and Hôpitaux. And we can get military tech for lovely way ahead of time. This gives us some innovativeness, and we also have the military tech advantage against the French in this war, meaning we can win any battle against them, as it's a huge difference. All right, we took Bologne. We just need to wait for Hôpitaux and Chartres. We have 63% war score, which is enough for our first peace deal with the French. Let's do for peace, and we're going to return cores, all of the provinces that Champagne needs Valois, Rem, Troyes, and Nemours. Then we're going to take the provinces of Berry and La Marche. The reason we want La Marche is because we can release Gascony from here, and Gascony has lots of cores to feed back that we can use to take more of the French provinces in our second war against them. What we want to do is not take any money or do anything else other than take these provinces so we can have a shorter truce. The truce is until 1459. This gives us enough time to consolidate and prepare for that second war against the French. Let's go ahead and send these demands. The reason we did this is that now for the King of the Franks mission, we own 16 provinces total, and we need to get 18. We need to own Paris. Paris is a lot of aggressive expansion, which is why we didn't take it in that first war. It's also a lot of war score cost, so we were able to take more provinces in that first war against the French without taking Paris. What we can do now is begin focusing on the League of the Public Wheel to complete this mission and then declare war on France once our truce 
is over with them and complete King of the Franks relatively quickly to seize all of those French vassals. We're going to fight the English since they are fighting the French in the Hundred Years' War still, and we want to avoid the English taking too many provinces from France, and we can weaken the English a little bit by taking a few provinces from them. So let's go ahead and declare war against England. We'll take the province of Co, and they outnumber us a little bit with the Portuguese involvement, but that's all right. We can still defeat them as we have the military tech advantage. So let's go ahead and declare war now against the English. And see, we already have this battle going on here. We have a lot more morale and we have a better leader. Right, we didn't get a stack wipe, but we defeated their army, which is really nice. And let's go ahead and crush that army up there as well. All right, let's see if we can get our allies to support us by switching it to supportive. So hopefully they'll join in this fight here. I just need a few more to enter here. I don't think this is going to be a stack wipe, sadly. That's all right, though. Maybe we can catch them where they were retreating to. Oh, we're going to catch them right here. Yep, that's a stack wipe. There goes most of the English army. Let's see how many troops they now have. Only 10,000. Also, now that we do have military tech four, let's go ahead and recruit a general here. Six shock. Wow. And two siege. An amazing general. And we can go ahead and grab another general too. Ooh, four shock and three maneuver. Now we don't have to worry about our ruler dying in battle and losing to stability, as it's a miracle he's still alive to this point. Looks like the Portuguese are landing up here. Let's go ahead and intercept them with the military tech advantage. Perhaps we could get a stack wipe. They're move locked. No vassals are nearby to help us though, so that probably won't be a stack wipe. Just kidding, it's a stack wipe. Military tech advantage is amazing. And the six shock general also helps a ton. All right, we took Bordeaux this time instead of the French, although they're going to take La Boude. All right, we got new champion of the Joust. This is going to give us a general with 100 army tradition. May as well take it. I know we lose prestige and legitimacy, but it's all right. A really good general is a really good general. Oh my God, what a general. Looks like Provence got excommunicated by the Pope. So now we have to stop everything that we're doing get our troops back over here and we need to declare war on Provence immediately so let us go ahead and declare this war we'll do excommunicated ruler CB on Verdun we're going to call in the Milanese with some favors again it doesn't matter who their allies are we're going to win this war with the military tech advantage regardless so let us go ahead and declare war on Provence with our free diplomat, what we need to do is begin preparing the League of the Public Wheel mission. We need at least three of the French vassals to have at least 100 opinion of us. So what we'll do is we'll begin improving relations with Foix, Armagnac, and Auvergne. Ah, the sack of Angers. And look at that, the English are running away. What cowards. All right, looks like the Pope declared war on Provence. And this is actually a good thing to have happen. And you guys will see why whenever we peace out with Provence. All right, looks like we lost our leader and now Charles de Bourgogne, Charles the Bold, is the Duke of Burgundy. With Charles as the new Duke, hopefully he stays alive long enough for us to set up the Burgundian succession crisis properly. Again, he's only 17 years old, so he has plenty of time to live. It looks like France peaced out with England, so the Hundred Years' War is over. They took La Bourde. They also took these provinces here in Normandy. They even gave back Alençon to the Duke of Normandy, and they took Calais. A bit unfortunate for us, as I was hoping we could could take Calais. And now we can peace out with the English. We have enough war score for what I wanted to do, which is to take Co and Bordeaux. We'll get all of their ducats as well. Again, it's very important that we just end this war quickly. So let's go ahead and send these demands. All right, we have 100% war score with Provence. Let's go ahead and end this war. What we're going to do is make them a Burgundian vassal. They're going to be very useful as a vassal since we can get more territory through them. Yes, we could take these four provinces right here. However, we don't need Lorraine's provinces just yet. Yes, they will join the HRE. That's all right, though. We can take those provinces later. Since it was an excommunication war, we don't have to worry about aggressive expansion. It's only 35 aggressive expansion to make them a vassal. Also, let's take all of their money and we can now make Provence our vassal. And because Provence is our vassal, we're now in control of the war that Provence had against the Pope. So we're going to beat up the Pope now and give Provence back the territory of Avignon. If we go to Provence's mission tree, they have the mission negotiate for Avignon. If we give Provence this territory during this war against the Pope, they get claims on all of these areas, which are going to be useful for us to use. Since this war against the Pope is a defensive war, what we can do is call in every single ally that we have. I think the Pope has like no chance of winning this war. And the siege of Avignon is over. And now we just wait for our 
allies to siege down the Papal Lands. Since Utrecht was in this war, we're going to take this province from them, and it's going to be useful for us to have this province in order to form Lotharingia later. All right, so we can now sue for peace with the Pope, and we're going to give Avignon back to Provence, and let's take all of their ducats and get war reparations, and let's send these demands. And there we go, Provence got Avignon back. It's January 1454, which means we can annex our starting vassal of Nevers. They are a disloyal vassal since we seized land from them to form Champagne. They are not a great vassal to have as well, so it's important we free up this diplomatic relations slot by annexing them. For the tier 2 government reform, I'm going to select curtail noble privileges. This gives us plus 15 tax modifier and the nobility loses 10% influence, which is useful now and later. If you want, you could go with compromise with the nobility or noble officer corps, but I'm going to select curtail noble privileges. And since we got Avignon back for Provence, you can see they completed the mission Negotiate for Avignon. And if we look at Provence, now they have claims on quite a few territories. Now that our progress towards annexation of Nevers is at 94%, let's go ahead and grant the nobility integration policy. This will increase the liberty desire of our subjects, but lower the diplomatic annexation costs. You must always give out this privilege when annexing vassals. And there we go, Nevers has been annexed. Let us go ahead and renew our alliance with the Pope. I know we beat them up for the province of Avignon, but it's useful for us to get that alliance. Again, we want to complete this mission, Papal Relations. Let's also go ahead and release the subject of Gascony. And now we have another vassal. Again, don't worry about going over diplomatic relations. Gascony is a great vassal as they have plenty of cores on France. So we're going to use Gascony in our second war against the French. What we're going to do to fix the liberty desire of our subjects is we're going to use some of our mana points to develop their provinces. Now, both of our subjects are loyal again. All right, we got 100 relations with the Pope and at least over 50 papal influence. So we can complete the mission papal relations to get an additional yearly papal influence for 20 years. It's imperative we complete the League of the Public Wheel mission as France did annex Auvergne. Again, it's tough to get every single vassal from the French in this patch. So we'll focus on Alençon, Bourbonnais, and Foix. What I'm going to do is send these French appanage gifts to improve their relations. All right, we got 100 relations with Alençon, so that's one of the French vassals we need for this mission. Let's go ahead and get indebted to the bourgeoisie once again. And now we can embrace the Renaissance. And our truces have expired with the French and all their vassals, but we're not going to go to war with them just yet. We need to complete this mission before we do. It looks like they're in the process of annexing Bourbonnais, so hopefully we can complete this mission in time and fight the French. And we got over 100 relations with Foix, so now we just need Bourbonnais. And we can get Bourbonnais to 87, but we need another method to improve relations. They are rivaled to Orléans, so what we're going to do is send Orléans a scornful insult to improve our relations with Alençon and Bourbonnais. And look at that! Bourbonnais has 109 relations with us. That's a big brain EU4 gameplay right there. Additionally, Alençon has at least 100 relations with us, and so does Foix. That means we can complete the mission League of the Public Wheel, giving all of France's vassals plus 50% liberty desire. With this mission complete, we gotta hurry and declare our second war against the French. For this second war against the French, we need to take Paris in order to complete this mission, King of the Franks, to make all of France's vassals our vassals. So let us go ahead and declare our second war against the French. We'll do Reconquest of La Boulde. This is why you need Gascony released in order to get all of these cores back for them. And we're gonna call in Aragon along with Milan. Now it's time for us to become the King of the Franks. Immediately, we're going to besiege Paris. What's great is that every single appanage of France has high enough liberty desire to avoid annexation, but not too high to get their independence supported by France's rivals. That's again why I recommend putting off this mission until the second war against the French. Also, it's important that we get all the provinces that Gascony needs, and we can even give potentially some provinces to Provence. Siege of Paris is over. We've captured Paris. Lovely. Let's go deal with the Scots up here in the Hague. All right, luckily, none of the French vassals are going to get their independence supported just yet, but hopefully not after the war either. All right, so we could get Admin Tech 5. I'm going to wait just a little bit since we need to core Paris immediately after this war. All right, now we're going to kill this army here. 
hopefully stack wipe it so they don't get any ideas. All right, nice. All right, it's time to sue for peace with the French. We're going to take Paris, of course, to complete the King of the Franks mission. Then what we're going to do is have France return the cores to Gascony. And then what we're going to do is get Dauphiné for Provence. And in terms of the truce time, it lasts until 1476. It's very important to know how long this truce lasts as we need Charles to live until 1476. Afterwards, it doesn't matter when he dies dies because we'll be able to take advantage of the Burgundian succession. So let's send these demands and conclude our second war against the French. All right, we're going to immediately make Paris a core. This will take until June 7th, 1464. Once that's done, we'll complete the mission King of the Franks and get all of those French vassals, which currently they all have very high liberty desire. Both Foy and Orléans have 100%. Wow, both Austria and Castile are supporting the independence of Orléans. That's absolutely awful. Let's take a look at Foy. Yep, supported by Castile. Now we can get Admin Tech 5, which unlocks our first idea group. For your first idea as Burgundy, you want to decide between influence or diplomatic ideas as we're getting lots of subjects. However, espionage ideas isn't a bad option either. It has a lot of unique bonuses with siege ability and aggressive expansion impact reduction, which will be helpful for expanding within the HRE. Don't pick an admin idea as your starting idea. We want to get to admin tech 7 to unlock that second idea group. For this run, I'm going to select influence ideas as my first idea. Buffs vassals significantly, helps with their liberty desire, and gives us some diplomatic reputation and diplo and annexation costs, which is going to be useful. So for my first idea, I'm going to select influence ideas. We got to 50% halfway there. Hopefully none of the French vassals declare independence. If EU4 gods or RNG or whatever are real, please just allow me this one thing. All right, Foy declared their independence on France. That's a yikes. Let's see, maybe Orléans is still loyal? Nope, they're at war with France as well. So France is now at war with Foy, Castile, Navarra, Orléans, Austria, and Hungary. All right, so we could complete the mission King of the Franks now that we made Paris a core. However, we only get three French vassals instead of five. So I'm going to wait and see how this independence war turns out. Maybe they will remain appanage of France. All right, we can get our first splendor ability. Let's go with justified wars for that aggressive expansion impact reduction. Wait, why are the Ottomans sieging Hungary? Did the Ottomans declare war on Hungary? Are they at war with Aragon? Whoa, they're at war with Foy? They actually intervened in the independence war with France? No way. Uh, that changes things. Maybe the Ottomans could uh, help the French out and uh, win the war for the French? All right, so it's the Ottomans versus Hungary, Austria, Aragon, and Castile. Maybe with the Ottomans in the war, France could uh, get like a white piece or something. That would be the best outcome for us. So now we can go ahead and get the 1% loans once again. Let's also get rid of the nobility integration policy as we're not going to be integrating any of the vassals we have currently. Yeah, the Ottomans are doing really well, all things considering they're actually winning that independence war for France because of all the stuff they sieged down in Hungary really quickly. They're actually sieging Vienna right now, 38,000 of them. I never expected the Ottomans to be such a valuable friend in a time like this. It's important to remember that since we gave Provence the province of Dauphiné, they were able to get at least 100 developments, which allowed them to complete the mission, the claims of King René. With this mission completed, they got cores on all of Naples. Look at all those juicy cores for us to take advantage of. This is why Provence is such a great vassal. So what we're going to do is reconquer the Neapolitan throne for Provence. We're going to do Reconquest CB on Napoli. We'll call in the Milanese with favors. Don't call in the Pope, as the Pope will likely want the provinces of Naples and they won't transfer occupation to Provence or to us. So let us take advantage of the Angevin claims of Provence and reconquer the Kingdom of Naples. There goes Luca's army. Very nice. All right, let's crush the Neapolitan army here. Oh God, I see Venetian armies coming as well. Oh my God. Oh my God. We need to put on supportive. We need all these people over here to get into this battle. Hurry, get in the fight, get in the fight. Can we win? 19k, 19k. Oh my god. Clutch. So what is the situation like in France? Let's see. War score isn't really high against them because of all the work the Ottomans have done. All right, we're going to fight the Venetians here. Nice shock roll. Wow, really good roll by them. Unlucky for us. 
They peaced out. The Ottomans peaced out. Oh, that's so awful. Let's see what happens. All right, the war's over. France still has four appanage. So Foi did get there. No, Foi is still appanage of France. So nobody got independence? Oh my god. Okay, so Foi has all this territory. Bourbonnais has this territory. And Orléans. Oh my god. Like, all France has is just this. That's crazy. Okay, now let's complete the mission. King of the Franks, we get four French vassals. And we get all of the territory of basically more than five vassals. So let's do it. We get plus 15 morale of armies for 20 years we get an extra diplomatic relation as well permanent claims on all the provinces owned by france and the french region so let's become the king of the franks and look at all those vassals then if we go to this map mode right here look at all that territory we got with just that mission again we have very disloyal vassals it doesn't matter we're not going to annex them the traditional way and it's worth it to get a vassal with all of these provinces we're now way over diplomatic relations that's right though like i said from the beginning it's going to be worth going over the diplomatic relations if you have any trouble with the liberty desire for your subjects again keep placating their local rulers and if you desperately need to start to develop within their provinces and we took naples very lovely let's go ahead and attack the neapolitan army here and there's a stack wipe at this point we can now carpet siege the rest of naples it's now safe to call the pope into this war as we fully occupied naples so the pope can't take any of these provinces is that Beirut? Beirut is the emperor. What? Now we can unlock our first idea in influence ideas. This gives us plus 25% income from vassals. Yes, I know we're behind in Diplotech. That's all right though. We need to get to additional loyalist recruitment to get the 15% reduction in Liberty Desire. So let's get some income from our vassals. And we can get our tier three government reform. We're going to select representatives of the crown. This gives us an extra diplomatic relation along with vassal force limit contribution plus 25%. Of course, with all the vassals we have, this is a perfect reform for tier three as Burgundy. And now we can sue for peace with Naples. Let's see how many provinces we can give to Provence. So we'll do return cores and uh, we'll select every single option and that's only 14 aggressive expansion and we can also give them naples itself and that's 15 aggressive expansion let us go ahead and give provence the kingdom of naples look at that beautiful provence and if we look at this map mode here look at all of that burgundian territory savoie has no troops this is perfect. We're going to declare war to get Provence's territories from them since this is going to be the easiest war in EU forever. And now we can sue for peace with Savoie. Let's take this province here. No coalition to worry about. What about Nice? Yeah, not really a coalition at all either. All right, we'll go with this peace deal for Savoie. After that war with Naples, you'll notice that Provence did complete the mission, the King of Naples, and now Provence has claims on all of the Western Mediterranean, including the Kingdom of Aragon. So we're going to take advantage of Provence's claims. All right, let us declare war on Aragon, and let's make the war goal Barcelona. The Venetians and the Portuguese won't join. We could call in Milan, but that makes Venice join, so... Let's not call in the Milanese. And yeah, let's begin our expansion into the Western Mediterranean and Iberia. We need to take these two provinces right here in France from the Castilians. We do want to get over to Sicily at some point, though. Okay, they got a great roll at the beginning. All right, there's the shock damage right there. Five shock roll. Oh my god, look at that roll. Let's go. Perfect. All right, so we won based off the shock. Close battle. All right, there we go. Got there in time, and now the 15k should arrive. But the morale difference, jeez. Now we're very close to taking Toledo, and then we can start carpet sieging a few places maybe. And we can get our second Splendor ability, and I think we're going to do Transfer Subject as it allows claims bordering claims, and we get to Transfer Subject's Peace Treaty at half cost, which will be potentially useful. Our truce with France does end in 1478, so we need to finish this war quickly. Yes, all right, we made it across. All right, now we just need Broadband to siege that fort there, and we need to take this fort here. A champion of the joust, why not? It sucks we're gonna lose the prestige, but we'll get it back, it's not a problem. Now we have too many military leaders probably, let's see. Oh my god, five, six, four, three? What a general. Now we can get Admin Tech 7 to unlock our second idea. 
For our second idea as Burgundy, we're going to go with administrative ideas. The reason we want this is that it's going to save us a lot of mana points in the long run. We want the core creation cost, and we do want the governing capacity modifier. Additionally, admin ideas has a great policy with influence ideas of a 15% reduction in diplomatic annexation cost. Yes, I know, we're not going to be annexing any of our vassals currently. However, we're setting ourselves up later on whenever we get future vassals. Now, you could opt for a military idea at this point. However, for our second idea, we're going to go with administrative ideas. Okay, only 490 days. I actually don't believe that number. I felt like it was longer. All right, with that siege over, let's offer peace to the Castilians. What we're going to do in this peace deal is return two cores to the French. I do want to take these provinces. However, it's going to increase our aggressive expansion too much, so it's better to return them to the French and take them from the French in a future war rather than fighting the Iberian Union again. Next, what we're going to do is get war reparations and all of their ducats. And now we're going to give Provence some of their claims, but we're choosing specific provinces. So we're taking Rosello, and we are also taking Messina. Again, these are just claims that Provence has, they're not cores. So if we continued taking provinces, you can see the aggressive expansion would be a ton. So we want to avoid having a coalition after this war, because we're going to trigger the Burgundian succession, and it's important that we don't have a coalition looming over us. With these two provinces, we're setting up future wars with less AE impact against the Iberian Union. So let's go ahead and send the demands. With that war completed, we have all of the provinces that we wanted to take to give to our vassals. So what we're going to do now is go to our court and we can abdicate Charles the Bold. Yes, I know we lose some prestige and legitimacy, but abdicating Charles triggers the Burgundian succession. That's why it's so important for him to live as long as he did. So now it's time for Charles the Bold to abdicate as the Duke of Burgundy. And now we have the Burgundian succession. It has always been feared that the Duke of Burgundy has passed from this life to the heavens without producing an eligible male heir. With the Duke's untimely demise, Marie de Bourgogne has ascended as the Duchess of Burgundy. However, with her claim relatively weak in the eyes of many noble lords and ladies, Burgundy is seen as ripe for the taking by the ambitious King of France and the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. So at this point, we have several options with the Burgundian succession that most of you are aware of. We could stay Burgundian if we we wanted to, and we fight France along with the Emperor. In this case, the Emperor is Peyruth, so it wouldn't be too difficult of a fight to do this. And if you do want to keep Mary of Burgundy, you could select this option. Come what may, Burgundy shall remain Burgundian. You do get some unique events with the Holy Roman Empire, which gives some benefits. So overall, it's a viable option. The other options involve falling under personal unions. You could fall under a personal union with the Emperor of the HRE. You could also fall under a personal union with your strongest ally, in this case it's Austria. Or you could reintegrate with the French. I would not recommend falling under a personal union with the Emperor of the HRE, which is usually Austria. And I would not do your strongest ally, as typically you haven't been fighting them and weakening them throughout the entire playthrough. Also, selecting either of those options will give you a five-year truce with your strongest ally or the Emperor of the HRE and you'll have to wait five years in order to get your independence. So what we're going to do is select the option to reintegrate with the French and fall under a personal union. So whenever we do this, our territory is going to increase by quite a lot. So with the Burgundian succession, we're going to reintegrate with the French. And look at that, we inherited all of those thrones, and look at all of the territory Burgundy now has. We own the entirety of Naples, we have lots of troops, and we own the majority of France. And we integrated all of our vassals perfectly. You can see we have no subjects. So we have 3 out of 12 diplomatic relations slots. Again, it's very important that you don't have a truce with the French whenever you trigger the Burgundian succession. Our truce ended in 1478, so we had no truce with them, and now we are a junior partner under the French. It's important now that we immediately declare our war for independence. We do not even wait a day. There are two reasons why we declare this war against France immediately. 
The first is that France got a new mission with the Domination DLC that allows them to instantly inherit Burgundy if they get the Burgundian succession. So obviously we don't want to see the end game screen. That's why it's vital that you don't have a truce with France so you can immediately declare war on them. If not, they're going to complete that mission. The next reason is that the Emperor gets a decision here. The Burgundian Inheritance Imperial Incident begins and they ask France to demand and lowland independence, or they even press a claim on Burgundy. So that's why we don't have a truce with them and we declare our independence war on them immediately. In my case, I'm very lucky that France is extremely weak and only has Scotland as an ally. If France has really strong allies, what you can do is try to get some of France's rivals to support your independence so you win the war a bit more easily. Let us now get our independence from the French. We got a 615 ruler, and now we can complete the mission, integrate Nevers. This gives us some more claims. And we can also unite the realm. This gives us some diplo power, and we get some tax bonus along with monthly autonomy change. And you can see we're well over our gov capacity. That's why I recommend going with admin ideas as a second idea. What we can do though, is we have plenty of crown land. So let's grant the bourgeoisie land rights. And we're also going to give the nobility land rights. And there we go, that helps with our governing capacity a little bit. What we need to do is actually state a lot of these provinces. And there we go, we're way over governing capacity by 400. And if you're worried about going over gov capacity, then just don't state many places, but you do want to state at least the low countries here as they are very rich. And we got the last jousting tournament, but now we get an extra 10% along with yearly army tradition and some prestige. All right, we got 52% war score, so let us go ahead and offer peace terms to the French. All right, for this peace deal, we're just going to take this province. I know we could probably take more, but it's better to take more from the French later as we're going to release a vassal to reconquer some territory from the French so we get less aggressive expansion. So let's go ahead and end this war with the French and we got our independence. I know you guys thought subjects were done, but no, as Burgundy, we're going to continue using vassals so we're going to create a few subjects the first subject we're going to create is down here and that is going to be sicily and the reason we're releasing sicily is that they have uh, cores on all of these provinces right here from aragon that we can take from them so they're a lovely vassal to have and the next vassal we're going to release is catalonia by the way i just want to point out if we released provence they would get 21 provinces and the last vassal we're going to release is Dauphin. The reason we're doing this is that we get a reconquest CB against the French for Lyonnais. All right, so at this point, we just need to stabilize our nation, boost our stability, fix our governing capacity, which we'll be able to do that by upgrading our government rank once we get 50 prestige. All right, at this point, let us just ally Saluzzo as we could offer them vassalization at some point. What we're going to do is upgrade the great project, the Palace of the Popes, to level one. This gives us a 15% reduction to province governing cost and gives us an extra max privilege for the clergy. We also get 100 splendor once we finish upgrading it, so let's do this. All right, we got 51 prestige. That means we can finally upgrade our government rank to a kingdom, and that helps our gov capacity a little bit. We now are only 200 above gov capacity, and we finally get an extra diplomat as well, which is very useful. Also, we have 99 prestige from upgrading our government rank. So what we can do is disinherit our heir. Very bad, 223. We want a better heir. So let's disinherit Philippe. Now that we finally stabilized the nation, it's time for the Burgundian king to host a feast. But not just any feast, a feast of pheasants. So let's go ahead and complete this mission. When we complete this mission, we gain a Holy War CB against the Ottomans for five years. And we're able to complete this mission because we have at least two allies who are rivaled to the Ottomans. And that is both Austria and the Mamluks. So let us host the Feast of Pheasants. The Feast of the Pheasant. The Burgundian king has called together all his friends and allies to a grand feast, where he, in between all manner of lavish entertainments, appealed to all before him for a fresh crusade against the Ottoman Empire. Those present were left bedazzled by the splendor of the feast, and amid the many barrels of Burgundy's finest that were drunk, the appetite for war did seem to increase. It remains to be seen, however, whether this enthusiasm will last into the morning after. So the Feast of the Pheasant actually did happen historically. 
The Burgundian Duke Philip the Good hosted the feast in 1454 at the behest of the Pope, and it was promised that all members would sign an oath of the pheasant to embark on a crusade. This feast was very lavish, as the text suggest. There were elephants, plenty of food and drink. However, even with all the efforts, the crusade failed to materialize against the Ottoman Empire. In E4, things will be different. Yes, we will embark on a crusade. The heathens shall cower before us. So now we get a Holy War CB against the Ottomans for five years. Let's go ahead and declare this holy war against the Ottomans. We have the CB for five years, so we may as well use it as soon as we get it. You could fight this war sooner if you want to. Regardless though, it's important to weaken the Ottomans so they'll be less of a menace later on. Let us go ahead and call in the Austrians with favors, and naturally since it is a holy war, let's call in the Pope. So let us go ahead and seize this moment to place ourselves as the champions of Christendom, liberate the Balkans, liberate Byzantium, and go crusading. So we need to fix our legitimacy. The way we're going to fix our legitimacy is by spending some of our military points to strengthen our governments. It costs a bit of military power, but we are ahead of military tech. Let's go ahead and strengthen government a few times. Now we won't have this civil war disaster as we have at least 75 legitimacy. Again, I should have done that sooner. Make sure to do that if you have any legitimacy issues after the Burgundian succession. Most of their troops are fighting Karakunyulu right now, so we can probably siege down most of the European holdings of the Ottomans. Looks like the Austrians made a mad dash for Constantinople. The last Burgundian duke to fight the Ottomans was John the Fearless during the Battle of Nicopolis in 1396. So with this war, we can avenge his defeat. And we can get our tier 4 government reform. So we're going to go with curtail clerical privileges. This gives us additional religious unity, some admin tech cost reduction, and the clergy loses some influence. So let's select this for our tier 4 government reform. All right, Selenik was taken, so now we can move through Greece freely. This war is a show superiority war, so we get more war score based off battles. We got an heir to the throne, another heir. 543, wow, really nice. Let's go ahead and stick with the name Philippe. I think now is a good time to declare war on the French. Again, we want more of their provinces, and we don't want them to join any future coalitions against us. So let's go ahead and declare this war. They're going to be joined by Scotland, Siena, and Utrecht. Scotland does have a lot of troops, but that's right, we just need to occupy the French provinces here on the continent. We'll call in the Milanese and Saluzzo and declare war. All right, let's split up these troops here so we can rush down the French provinces really quickly. All right, now that they got a straight crossing for us, we can go across. Fuck! 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 Oh! Can we finally catch them? All right, there we go, stack wiped. All right, I think we have enough war score with the Ottomans. Let's go ahead and end this successful crusade. What we're going to do is get war reparations. We're going to take Constantinople for ourselves. Again, it doesn't matter about aggressive expansion. And let's get Gelibolu. Then what we're going to do is take all of their ducats. And with that, let's end this successful crusade for Constantinople. And the French have unconditionally surrendered, or it looks like we have 100% war score now. All right, so I transfer all this territory to my vassal. Again, we're already over gov capacity, so we don't want to take too much from the French in this war. But we still want a few provinces for ourselves. So let's go ahead and sue for peace. We'll go with this peace deal, leaving the French with just one province. And let's get war reparations and all of their ducats. And we'll leave the French as a one province miner. Let's send the demands. Now that we're finally at peace, what we can also do is release the subject of Byzantium. And there we go, we've restored Constantinople to its rightful owners, and now we'll help them reconquer their territory against the Ottomans in the next war. All right, we can make Saluzzo a vassal. Lovely, so now we have another five vassals already, and we still have an extra Diplo slot. All right, it's time for us to declare war on Aragon. What we're going to do is the reconquest of Barcelona for Catalonia. We'll call in Austria along with Milan. We're declaring this war against Siberia as we don't want them to join any coalitions. And these are reconquest CBs, so the aggressive expansion we'll take is going to be very minimal. So let us go ahead and fight Iberia for a second time. We do want to end this war relatively quickly. Once 1500 comes around, we need to complete this mission, secure the succession. Well, we just need to take Lisbon. There we go, 141 days. That was a very quick siege. Let's get the Portuguese out of this war. Let's make them pay war reps. Let's break their alliance with Castile and get all their ducats. 
All right, I think we have enough war score. Let's go ahead and offer peace to the Iberians. Again, I wanted to end the war by 1500. It's 1500, so let's end this war. We're going to return every single core to our vassals of Catalonia and Sicily. Then we're going to give the province of Barcelona to Catalonia, and we're going to take Malta. And that's all we need to take from this war. Again, only 14 aggressive expansion, no coalition whatsoever. We have a truce with France and England won't join by themselves. Let's go ahead and get war operations and then whatever ducats we can and end our second war with Iberia. Now that it's the year 1500, we can complete a very special mission, and that is secure the succession. Once we complete this mission, we automatically join the Holy Roman Empire. We get the seed is strong until the end of the game, giving us a 33% chance for a new heir. We also get dynastic authority restored for 20 years, giving us a 15% reduction to diplomatic annexation cost. That's going to be useful as we have plenty of vassals to annex. I'm not going to complete this mission right away, though. The reason for that is if we were to join the Holy Roman Empire in our current state, we would lose our government rank of empire and we would revert back to a duchy rank. In the Holy Roman Empire, only electors can have the kingdom rank and only the emperor can have the empire rank. If we were to go back to the duchy rank, we would suffer in terms of governing capacity. And I don't want to deal with those gov capacity issues again. They're manageable though, so if you feel like you can not worry about governing capacity, then go ahead and complete Secure the Succession and join the Holy Roman Empire. In my case though, I'm not going to do that. Instead, what we'll do is we're going to ally some of these electors here and get them to vote us into the Holy Roman Empire as the Emperor. Once we're the Emperor, we can automatically join the HRE and then we can complete Secure the Succession. This mission gives a much stronger bonus if we were to keep Mary of Burgundy. With her as the ruler of your nation, you get the event that determines whether you care for the French throne or not. And if you don't care about the French throne, then you have the option of joining the Holy Roman Empire. Once you get the Imperial Entrance event though, you actually want the Holy Roman Emperor to refuse your request to join the HRE. If they refuse, you get Subjugation or Restoration of Union CBs on every single elector of the Holy Roman Empire. You get those CBs for only 40 years though, so you have to rush to complete it. So here are the conditions to get the Imperial Entrance event. As you can see, it's best to do with Mary of Burgundy. And so because you can get war goals on all the electors, it makes keeping Mary as Burgundy's Duchess a viable option still. So I'll probably try that pathway in a future Burgundy video. All right, so we got four electors voting for us, even though we're outside of the HRE. Went for Mainz, Cologne, the Palatinat, and Saxony. Could also dismantle the HRE if you would like. It's relatively easy to do so at this point, especially if you've been following this run as Burgundy. We're very powerful and could easily dismantle the HRE, especially with such a weak emperor as Beirut. Regardless though, I do want to become the emperor to take advantage of the bonuses. And since we have four electors voting for us and the emperor is 43 years old, I don't mind dealing with the governing capacity issues as, however, again, if you want to avoid having those problems, then just wait until the current emperor dies and you have enough electors voting for you. In my case though, what we're going to do now is complete the mission, secure the succession. And with that mission completed, we can now join the Empire. And we get some claims on Alsace, the Lower Rhineland, and the North Rhine areas. And look at that, Burgundy is now a part of the Holy Roman Empire, and we have quite a few claims to pursue in order to help us complete the mission. The Crown of Lothair, we just need 12 more provinces, and own Aachen and Lorraine. Once we do this, we can complete Lothair's legacy and form Lotharingia. Also, now that we're a part of the HRE, you can see that these electors are definitely going to vote for us, and we have four to the current emperor's three, so we will be voted as the next emperor. Now that we've secured the electors to become the next emperor, and we are officially in the HRE, the next part of this playthrough will focus on us forming the nation of Lotharingia and continuing our expansion throughout all of Europe. I would say, though, for this first playthrough, did pretty well for ourselves, took lots of territory, and we set up future expansion routes in the Balkans and Anatolia, into Italy, into Iberia, and of of course, we will venture into the British Isles. So I hope you guys found this Burgundy playthrough and guide both entertaining and informative. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. I plan on making some more E4 content and stay tuned for the next part of this playthrough. Once again, thank you all for watching and take care.